my life before Jesus, I would describe it as pretty standard and normal. Uh, I was raised in a Christian family though, so I heard about Jesus um, early on in my life. But I never really understood it and didn't really make that much of an impact on my life. I never <laughs> really grasped um, any sort of meaning to it. And I was pretty content with life um, at the start. Nothing actually wrong was, was going on. And I was just happy to sort of th flow through life in that contentment, really. I was privileged and blessed to grow up in a Christian family, a loving Christian family. I never ever remember a time when I didn't believe in God and I grew up knowing the Bible stories and that's how I was. So before I was a Christian I was a hopeless um, heroin addict. I'd been on it for 12 years, um, yeah, looking for a way to solve my problems through drugs and alcohol. Um, I looked to God as a way to escape my life as an addict. Um, I was very desperate and I started praying to God. I was raised with being told that God is all loving, all powerful, knowing God. And then all of a sudden my mother left my family to have an affair. And so I was stuck with um, the question of why didn't all loving, all powerful, all knowing God, lovingly, all his divine power, knowingly let her walk out of my life. And although I never really had an answer for that at the time, I chose to believe. Well, believe that there had to be something more to life, meaning um, to, to what happened to me. And I guess that's when I made my first real commitment to, to follow God. I know that God loves me because he's demonstrated his love in that he was there for me at my darkest time when I most needed him. When I had a great event in my life where I became born again. And that was eight years ago when I had a stroke, which means that I'm paralyzed on the left hand side. But in God's hands, this couldn't have been a better thing for me really because he saved me and he carried me just like it says in that wonderful poem, Footprints, he carried me, he saved me. In 1970 I got married and we were faced over the next eight years with two devastating tragedies for us in that we had two little boys. The first one was born in 1971 and he was very severely handicapped. He died at two years old. Um, he died, in fact, the day after my daughter was born. And then when she was two and a half, we had another little boy who was also very severely handicapped who died at two and a half. Um, all through that time, I kept trusting God and praying, um, praying for their healing and in the end knowing that God was going to take them to be with him and that was going to be the way they would be healed. Um, I was doing some voluntary work in a Christian cafe and a Christian couple there called um, Charlie and Teresa offered to pray for me and asked if I wanted to let the Lord Jesus into my heart and that's one of the occasions that I did that. I can't remember any particular prayer I said um, during that time but it was perhaps um, I asked God one thing and I questioned him and it was a particular passage or verse from the Bible John 3.16 and it's known quite, quite, it's quite well known um, and it's for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whoever believes in him shall not perish but inherit eternal life and I thought okay God loves what does your love look like God because I really don't understand with my family and everything that's happened okay show me your love please show me show me your love what does that mean and I guess it was after that that Looking back, I see that God definitely showed his love to me in ways that I could never really imagine um, happening, but he definitely answered it and he, and he still is even now. And during that stroke, my memory is very clear because I had a very vivid vision, a spiritual vision in the midst of this, where Nick McKinnell was there in his capacity as a, a teacher of the word, almost like a non-threatening presence. God was with me, but 
He was with me in a, such a way that what I saw wasn't threatening at all. In fact, it was comforting because we were at the long table in the house in France. Long table, lots of people sitting around it. And Nick was explaining the meaning of Easter about the death and the resurrection and forgiveness. And every single one of us around this table, we had been given a piece of wood, which together had made up a cross. There was a cross made of wood, but it was broken up into pieces so that everybody had a piece. Not only the wood, but also a piece of paper, which came from a paper cross. And so this paper cross was cut up as well. And we all had a piece of wood, a piece of paper and a pen and a hammer and a nail. And we all had to write down the name of somebody that we wanted to forgive. We all had to hammer the piece of paper to the wood with the nail. And then each of those was placed in the wood burning stove in the corner of the room. And I've always associated flames with the Holy Spirit. So there we are, those pieces of wood and paper were burned up in the wood burning stove. Since I've become a Christian, my life has changed uh, dramatically and, and drastically. That's not much of an over-exaggeration either, it really has. And Jan McKinnell was there, and I'm sure a lot of you know that she used to be a midwife, so she was there in her capacity as midwife. I believe, firmly believe, that she was there to oversee the safe delivery of a newborn, which was me. I believe that I was born again. I started going with some friends to a neighbouring church for their evening service on a Sunday and it was a service like nothing I had ever been to before. You could really feel the presence of God and the Holy Spirit alive in the church. The hymns and the songs weren't just being sung, they were really being worshipped and it made me feel I was missing out. Somebody in that church prayed with me one evening and he I think he prayed that the Holy Spirit would fill my life and that was it, I went home. The next morning I woke up with this strong realisation that I was a sinner and this was new to me because I would never ever considered that before, I didn't realise that I was a sinner. And then with that came the realisation of what Jesus actually did for me on the cross how he died for my sins and it just made me so thankful. He's loved me so much and blessed me with so many things, particularly through his church. I, a people that I know really love me and I can really call my family, people I can depend on. He's pulled me through so many different things in life which I struggled with. Um, and it's just knowing that I have a relationship with God, he loves me and, and I love him. That. That's life changing um, and it's definitely changed my life. Everything started to make sense and my life was changed. I felt like a completely different person and I knew what it meant to be born again because that's just how I felt. And then gradually I found I started to love Jesus more in a way I'd never had before and I actually fell in love with Jesus. Since being a Christian, I haven't um, done any drugs for 11 years. Um, I've maintained being clean by God's grace. Um, I have help with my problems and I don't need to run to things in the world to fix myself because I have Jesus. And I can share what he's done for me to help others get the same. It was wonderful for me in the end because St Andrews is such a wonderful church where God does meet with us and I have been so blessed with the friends that I've made with the congregation there who have always been there to support and encourage me and embrace me and love me. That's how God has demonstrated his love for me through the hearts and hands of others. 
and I thank them from the bottom of my heart because without them I wouldn't have a firm foundation to stand on which is what God has given me and God has also provided me with the luxury of time to spend time with him and in meditation with him and reading his word which means so much to me it means so much more to me now than it ever did I am a changed person most definitely I know that as I also have no doubt that I am a sinner have no doubt that I was forgiven I have no doubt that I am loved this is what God has done for me he's made my life better he's taken something that Satan meant for bad Satan thought that because I was a sinner and I knew it that he had his claws into me and he was going to take me but God had better plans than that and he saved me carried me and gave me this wonderful life that I have now I'm still a sinner I know that and I know that on my own without Jesus I'm completely lost I don't deserve to go to heaven I don't deserve to have that reward but when the Father does call me when my time comes Jesus will be beside me and he'll be speaking out for me and he will say to the Father that he has washed my sins away with his blood and that just makes me so thankful. Life hasn't been perfect, I've had many slip ups um, but I know that Jesus is better and putting my faith in him he always brings me through.